to On the Road of Recovery. We're here with Ginger from the Gathering Place. Can you share the history of the organization? Okay. Well, the organization actually was first chartered in, I believe, 1969 as Athens Mental Health Incorporated, doing business as a gathering place. And um, it really just started out um, with community members that really saw a need because at the time in the late 60s all the mental health hospitals were being deinstitutionalized across the country and they saw that, that a lot of people were just kind of put into the community and they didn't really have case management during those times a lot of people didn't really know how to grocery shop for themselves they didn't really know how to maybe go about like they were maybe put into apartments but they didn't really know how to do basic hygiene care, you know, just things. So a group of ladies got together. We have three founding mothers who are amazing. They all have passed on, sadly. And they had really researched, um, I think, the clubhouse model, which is an international model. Um, we believe um, that the Gathering Place is the first drop-in center, peer center in the state of Ohio. And so they started renting this place in 1976, So, and we're still here on Southern North Congress. And in part, and in its recovery, actually, the recovery model before the um, addiction side used it, it was actually always about mental health. And so it's called the recovery model. Um, and so then that was adapted. But it was always about we believe, and we still believe statistically, two thirds of individuals that identify with a mental illness or a mental health disorder, they do, they can, and they do recover. And recovery can look like um, maybe using medications, maybe going to counseling. But it can mean coming to a peer center as part of your peer support, your recovery supports. It can mean getting a job. It can mean waking up every day and having that ability to live in a house and, and you're in stable housing, you have stable food, you have stable friends. And so the gathering place is a big part of that for people. It's like people's home away from home. Um, so that's the history of the gathering place and some of the services that we do. I think that's the next question. Um, we kind of, in some ways, I feel that we serve various subcultures because it was always about mental health in the early days. It's like at that time, no one really talked about substance use as a disorder. We now know it's on the DM5. We now know that 90% of individuals that have a substance use disorder also have a co-occurring mental health disorder. However, 50% of individuals that have a mental health disorder do not have a co-occurring substance use disorder. And so I just think as the field has changed, the gathering place itself has also adapted to different things. And so now when we look at, I, when I look at who we serve, when I look at programming, so I would say our members, and when I say member, those are individuals who have committed to being a part of our social integration model, our social model. And they are very much involved with things like painting this porch, <laughs> like getting this sign. Um, Perhaps our community gardens, you know, getting those established, um, our meals, um, where we're going to go on summer trip, what type of things that we should buy, um, what type of programming should we be doing. And so programming for those individuals who are well into recovery is going to be music therapy, it's going to be poetry, it's going to be chair yoga, it's going to be maybe like art group, it might be like writing group it just depends on the members kind of like um, drive that a little bit but for the most part we've always done those things that I've just mentioned but when we do an intake we're finding out their story so they're telling us their story so we can understand what resources do they need and then we so a good part of what we do in our mission is linkage services and so that's so we know that we can immediately give that person a meal we have a meal here every day that's part of our programming um, they can use our shower, they can use our laundry. We have laundry facilities because that's so important. They can get um, free hygiene products that they may need. Um, we give bus passes, we might give gas cards that they do if they're living in their cars. Um, sometimes we'll put people up in a hotel. Um, so those are, the, those are more our crisis situation where at least people just have a place to stay. We also will try to get them clothing vouchers, so we'll do things like that. But it's like, those people aren't necessarily ready to be members yet because they just know this is a place that I can go and get resources and I can be understood and I can be connected because it takes a long time sometimes to get a counselor to get into case management. And so we kind of like do case management before those individuals um, maybe have a case manager. And so, so that's 
you know, some of that type of services that we do, and I kind of mentioned the programming that we do. We are open 365 days a year, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Saturday, Sundays, it's like noon to 6. Um, we are some people's home. You know, it's like they don't necessarily have family, and this is where they spend all their holidays, and we buy gifts for everyone, you know, we have stockings for everyone. Um, so that's a big thing. So we also are involved, and it's more than just what we do here. We are a regional lead um, for the state as a model. You know, we have a statewide advocacy network grant, so we're a SWAN grantee. We've helped to form Ohio Pro, which is Ohio Peer Recovery Organizations. Like myself and a lot of other SWAN people around the state, we've come together that have peer houses like this. And we all have different models. You know, they're all very different. This is a very homey place, um, the gathering place. It, it really is a place, it's very, it's vibrant and really feels like a home. The whole point is for our community, for us to do this for our community, to like create awareness that mental illness and substance use has no face. It has no color, has no age, has no size. And it's, it's just something that we all can identify with. Yeah,